All right, I'd like to call together, uh, call to order the Thursday, May 4th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee uh, at Town Hall. And I will read the uh, disclaimer, COVID disclaimer here. Oh, I guess we're off that maybe. Pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via in-person and via remote means. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandovermath.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel 26, or online at www.northandovercom.org. Every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive re record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. If the public would like to participate in the public meeting, please email your questions or comments prior to or during the meeting to CPC emails at northendovermath.gov. The question or comment will be provided to the committee before the meeting or read during the proceedings if received during or shortly before the meeting. All right. Okay. Um, so having said that, the first item up is to discuss any outstanding concerns on our FY24 applications. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, yes. Hi, Ron. Uh, so we have Ron, John, Terry, Rick, myself, and Tim Shearhart. Thank you. In attendance. Uh, okay, in terms of FY24 applications, uh, I would say, you know, we had the withdrawal of the Sutton Pond application uh, prior to the last meeting that was canceled. Um, so that's, you know, no longer germane to our discussion. Um, and in terms of other things that have happened since then, um, we can talk about this a little bit if we talk about the town council review. But we had, you know, now that we're, we did get, um, Ron actually could speak a little bit to what the historic commission said about two of the applications uh, that came in. And we can get that entered into the record uh, before we move on to discussion of other items. Ron, you want to talk about those two things that you forwarded over? Okay, so the two items were the um, Historic Society, Preservation of Artifacts, and Ridgewood Cemetery, um, Preservation of Records. And there was a Historical Commission meeting on Tuesday night, May 2nd, and um, both those, the committee voted to recognize that both those items were of historical and cultural significance to the town. Great. Thank you and, and thank the commission for, for handling that. I think we, you know, um, we're crossing our T's this year and making sure that we, we get everything, uh, you know, thoroughly reviewed by the commission. And I know it's been a lot of work for them. So we certainly appreciate it. Um, the other update, I think we could, we could talk about for those of you who've seen the warrant, um, is that the finance committee, uh, did not recommend favorable action on um, the wall at Ridgewood Cemetery. So I wanted to open that up a little bit. Um, and in, in full disclosure, um, I actually have a pre-scheduled work, at this like once a year work meeting that happens to conflict with town meeting this year. Uh, we can talk about it. Uh, a little bit, but um, so I won't be there to make the presentation. Uh, but I guess it's a question for us if we will, you know, what posture the committee wants to take, if we want to sort of prepare a statement in advance about that, or if we want to, you know, you know, go on the record here or, you know, I mean, I open it up for I a conversation. Need a little bit more information, I don't think it's come full circle yet is that the uh, Ridgewood Cemetery you know, Committee is obviously aware of that. Uh, I believe they have gone to the people on the FinCom, or we're trying to get to the people in the FinCom that were opposed to it. 
what I got back, and again, I want to be careful because I'm, I'm getting it through a three-way uh, message, was that if they're still adamant that they're uh, opposed to it, they would pull, request it and pull the article, okay. which makes it a lot easier, obviously. Uh, I, so I don't know whether they had the conversation and they turned the people around or whether uh, they're still stuck that way. But, you know, they know the time is of the essence and they have to make a decision pretty quickly. So unfortunately, I thought that they would have an answer by tonight, but they don't. So both articles? They would pull both articles? No, just the one. Just the one, the wall? The wall. The other one, <coughs> uh, the barn, I think they feel... Uh, deadlocked. Is, is, and from what I've heard is there was not going to be any active opposition to that, but then again, I'm, I'm hearing it secondhand, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can pull up their letter. I think the bond is a two-part thing. I, and, I mean, are we allowed to discuss that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, one is the historical aspect of it. And if that's not enough, with gaining that bond, being able to take down the buildings that currently exist in the cemetery to make more room for, for uh, more grave sites, which is what we were trying. That's one of our biggest things is to try and make more space because they're going to run out of space. But if they can take those roadways out of there and they can take the, the buildings out of there and move the equipment out of there, it's going to open up hundreds, hundreds of spaces. Uh, and I think that was, for me, that was one of my reasons for going for that. So I think it's, if you, I know you're speaking to it, but I just think that would be a, a strong point for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, they're only unfavorable on the boundary wall and... They have not made a recommendation, but reserved the right to make a recommendation on the, on the barn. And I do think that, as I said, there is going to be a dialogue, but I think the, the Ridgewood group felt fairly strongly about the barn and realized that the wall was a little bit more out there, and if the opposition continued, they would withdraw, but hopefully we'll know within another day or two. Okay. That would be the ideal situation. I, it puts us in a funny position, I suppose, of technically we would have to vote to uh, withdraw the article, I suppose. Right. Uh, you know, and maybe what we'll do, Gene, is schedule something, you know, before town meeting. Right. I was just going to ask, do you routinely we, schedule before town meeting or no? What's that? Do you routinely schedule before town meeting or We've no? never done it before. Okay. I think we have the 13th on the... Well, no, no, I mean the, the day of town meeting. The day of town meeting. Yeah, the yeah, planning board meeting. meets at 6 o'clock at night. If you guys want to schedule a meeting ahead of that, I can coordinate it. Right, right. Yeah, I think that, that would be the, no, the best thing is just schedule a meeting as a placeholder, and then, you know, depending on how it goes, we can be in a position to vote. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, I listened to the discussion I think they had. I don't think we had dissimilar concerns you know when in our when we were as we discussed you know both those both both those projects I, I guess I just you know how do you add that as a criteria to the project review is it in the best interest of the North Andover taxpayers that's like an extremely subjective to me yeah. I just look at it and I say like well, that's I very mean, every, subjective it, everything is you know I yeah. the funny thing is that at one level you can make an argument in the case of Ridgewood that it obviously is because they're taking a cost away from the town because the town under state law has to provide for cemetery and we don't pay any direct cost of doing that I mean I don't know how many hundreds of thousands and over Lawrence pays but it's a lot of money yeah. so yeah. it's that's no, that be, that's a good yeah. point for research. I think yeah. to kind of look at surrounding towns and yeah. what that, yeah. what that, you know, what that cost is, because you know yeah. it would be sort of a, a useful point. I think, you know, especially when you look at it big picture. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I know I did talk um, to a board member at uh, Joe Palich from Ridgewood, and they recently sold, uh, I think, twenty plots to the veterans group here at, you know, 50% of, you know, list price. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think there's certainly a, a public benefit, um, you know, and I, I think 
it goes also to the, the longer term plans, like the capital, when they had the capital plan, I thought that was, um, you know, a useful, yeah. a useful guide for like the yeah. next couple yeah. of years and maybe it's time for, yeah. you know, to have a dialogue about <coughs> doing capital plan two in terms of that and then we could map it out a little bit better. Well, it definitely provides some additional burial plots. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because they're used to the town. Mm -hmm. The uh, Ridgewood is a national register historical sites, correct? Right. Did I say that right? Yeah. On? Okay. Yeah. And uh, on a personal level, when I walked the cemetery, um, I was duly impressed by the town folk that are represented in that cemetery. It's, it's, it's history. Our town council has said it's, it fits the bill relative to a, this CPA, uh, the application, uh, to the CPA Act. Um, and to put a wall where they're suggesting, you know, honestly, it really f helps bring it all together still more so. They've got a lot more to go, but it still brings it all together, including if they're consolidating space into the barn, this all going to be part of keeping that cemetery up to speed relative to the town, its history, the people who live here. Uh, to me, it, it's, it, it supports the citizens here. Uh, it's, it's not a selfish individual thing. It's look at the names in there. <laughs> it's like, you know. No, I think there's generally goodwill there. You know, again, it's, it's hard to tell how broad that you know, sentiment is on the FinCom. Um, and the one advantage on the wall is you could pull it back a year and you're not really not going to lose anything. It's not like, you yeah. know, like the barn. If you don't do something, it it's may deteriorate. So, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, any, can we consider this, this conversation done and we can... I think we have a sentiment of the board. We don't. I don't think we need to take a yeah. vote, and we'll just, you know, schedule a meeting before town meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. if you're not going to be at the next meeting, and now that we don't have a vice chair, uh, so who, who runs the meeting? So I was going <laughs> to propose uh, that that Tim do the presentation because he has the. Well, the, I get that, know. but if you're running a meeting, I yeah, mean, if somebody's going to be. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, can we, uh, are, are you, I mean, if we wanted to, I don't know whether we're getting too deep into it, but can we make you the temporary chair and then make Tim the vice chair and then. How about then acting? Acting, yeah. You could be the That's chair. A good actor. Place, <laughs> <if you're right. laughs> I mean, in those, in those bylaws we did, though, do we have to wait a meeting or can we do it tonight? Uh, I don't know. I think, I'm not sure, but I would actually suggest that just for, it's maybe a detail. I don't you think we ever talked about an acting. So yeah, we <laughs> here we go. Yeah, yeah. Talked about a vice chair. That's yeah, right. So let me pull up the. Um, yeah, let me pull up the uh, minute the bylaws we we did. I don't have a problem with any of it. I just want to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. Right. So. I mean, I've never. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's rare. We wouldn't have both. Can you have a meeting without a, a chairman or a vice chairman? Uh, right in it? Did they just say he's going to replace them for that meeting? Yeah. Okay. Oftentimes there's a motion to agree yeah. to that. Yeah. So okay. I think you'd be fine, but let's look at the bylaw first. Oh, here we go. I have it from the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, 
So here's what it says. If the chair resigns, the vice chair will serve as the chair for the remainder of the year, and an election for the vice chair will be held at the next meeting. So I don't know that we can, why don't we, I move that we have an election for vice chair at the next meeting. Because right? <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't say we were going to elect a vice chair tonight. Good. So Good. I would say that that would run us afoul of not being specific enough about our notice. agenda and, the, yeah, and okay. notice and so forth. So, so, but I think we're okay with what Gene said to we do. We can name an actor, right? For right. This well, I mean, you can yeah. make him the chair, and he can resign right after the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do we want to? Doesn't like. Do we want to? Do we want to do the belt and suspenders and have a? Do we want to do the belt and suspenders and, and have an acting chair for the next oh, meeting? Is that what you do? I would do that acting chair for the next meeting, and at the next meeting, which presumably is before town meeting. Yeah. Vote. Tim as chair. As chair? Well, that's right. Oh, chair. the chair now? Yes. yes. I'm the chair until the end of the year, yeah. yeah. Until the so, end of the year. Whatever. So, so you would be just the, the vice, chair. vice chair? That's all. Yeah. Okay. Right. Vice chair. Okay. Any, so is there a motion any motions? For, for an acting, v, uh, acting chair, uh, vice chair? Motion again? to elect him as an acting vice chair. Second. Um, can we... Uh, do we have a quorum to do it? I can't yeah, we have a myself. quorum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a quorum. We have a quorum. Are we, yeah. We have Ronson. Yeah. Remote, so we have a quorum. Are we, are we in the same position we would be <laughs> in doing this that we would be, that we didn't announce we are going to do this, or is this just a... I mean, if we follow your rule, we could just do it at the next meeting. So we could just say... I mean, I think it's, I think it's called suspenders. I think okay. It's, All right. Yeah. So we have a motion. For so, a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So Tim is the acting, acting vice chair at the next meeting of the Keener Bay Graduation Committee. <laughs> and then we'll have an election for the vice chair at the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, when we start the new year. Yeah. Whenever we start the new year. All right. Okay, that sounds good. Um, before we leave the uh, things, do we have more information? I think I sort of talked to you briefly about it on the Stevens Coolidge um, agreement to um, open up. I think they did. I think they said they'd have a did day, a month. Well, did you yeah. get the written agreement? I, so I've got I got the same thing that you got from Rick Gorman. Okay. I don't know that it's been signed, but why don't you talk to it and. Okay, so, so I know we got a day a month that was open to the public um, there. We, we have uh, two days that are going to be uh, the Christmas lights for the, for the students who can't, um, can't, afford, to, um, the, the can't afford to go to, 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 go to it. So there's two nights of that. The, um, they're opening the grounds to the uh, youth center and to the schools whenever they want to do all kinds of um, um, work with the plants and stuff like that rather than have the gardens at the schools they're going to be able to use the gardens there and monitor them and all of that they're opening the um, the grounds for all the kids for graduation and prom for pitches uh, they can go there and get their pitches taken on the ground that's normally you have to pay for that so it's it's a nice benefit um, we couldn't get we we did try and get fields but they all the fields in the summer are used for um, they work with uh, Merrimack College on uh, different birds and different species out there. So they can't do that. But in the wintertime, it's open up for cross-country skiing and uh, snowshoeing. All the grounds are open and uh, to go through. They, they're they doing um, library passes. I think they're up to three library passes. So at any any of their events, you can go to the library and get a, and get a pass to go for free, family pass. And they're going to have three of them available at the library here in North Anna Road. They do have them available in other libraries, but only one. But here, there's going to be three, uh, and I, I think that's. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it was all submitted to town council, and I don't know if it's been signed, but I, I think um, I think everybody was happy with it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. The update I got today is there are some tweaks, but that's the general idea. And there's a lot. Of, you know, I think it's a good, it's a good step, and it's good to hear yeah. that that they're. Um, expanding their engagement overall. I mean, it does sound like they're planning to do a lot they, more. I'll tell you, they were very, very open to, to working with us, and um, 
uh, it, it was one of the better meetings you could imagine. You know, the school department was there, uh, youth center was there, and everybody um, got what they needed. So uh, that's uh, great. Okay. All right, <coughs> town council's um, comments. Um, you know, basically went through, and they're still. Um, they haven't been completely finalized, but these were draft. And the concerns were around the Sutton Pond project, which was withdrawn. Uh, there were some questions about the historic artifacts because waiting on the historic commission, which Ron brought to us. So that was good. Um, and, the, and the records from Ridgewood. So both those were found to be historically significant. significant. And I think, you know, as I said earlier, I think we can probably consolidate that review next year and go with all the applications or you know have them go through that process before they come to us so that we have that all buttoned up and we're not you know going back and forth um, so essentially you know everything else went was found to be you know permitted under the act um, that we're funding so I think we're in good stead and we have had a you know thorough review um, and again I think you know, if this is going to be a part of the process, we can. It's a good thing to talk about in terms of getting in front of it a little bit because it's, you know, obviously it's tough to do legal research and, you know, when you get an application on February 1st and you got to make a decision in mid March, you know, so I think we could talk about that when we meet early next year in terms of the timeline for when we get applications. Uh, and at least I don't think you would need the full detailed application you know, really to have legal review because it's it's the concept, right? Like it doesn't matter if you're spending one dollar or a hundred thousand dollars, it's the same. Yeah. Well I mean it, it, it's also, you know, in some respects there is a uh, advocacy organization that actually you could vet that stuff through too if you had a you know ambiguity. I mean you can talk to Stewart and he's very helpful. I mean he probably understands the law better than most town councils. So yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, That's good. Yeah. Any questions on the legal opinion? No. Okay. Um, I thought we would go, you know, Brian had started the um, preparation materials for the for town meeting. Um, and I thought it'd be useful, um, and Gene can pull them up um, and display them. I thought it'd be worth it just to run through and see if there's anything we people are in general or comfortable with the uh, presentation. I think we, did we clear Brian off? <laughs> I can't remember if I fixed it. Nope. All right, we got to fix that. Nope, uh, I'm still on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we'll do that. Um, but if we want to just walk through the uh, overall it's easy to agenda. Look down there. That's You're true. Straight in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the first page is just kind of uh, a lot of the stuff we did in terms of bylaws and, um, you know, continuing to work on the signage. Rick's great work on that. Uh, and then we have the status of funds. I think you have to push the space bar to get them all to come down. So there's our, um, you know, what's encumbered. We have 15 million, you know, um, on a, on hand in our accounts. We have, geez, I can't see that far. We, which, one, <laughs> which one are you looking at? We have uh, encumbrances of, you know, about 8 million, which would leave us with about 6 million before we start this year. Uh, we're expecting another... 690,000 to come in um, over the end of the fiscal, between, you know, February and the end of the fiscal year. Um, you know, that's where we are. And then, you know, interest income, uh, I think, you know, we should be pretty healthy. It might even be a little bit better if we're, you know. Certainly better at the rates higher, yeah. 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 Um, and then, you know, we'll have our allotment next year of about $2 million. We could cut off a little bit. Well, we can fix the formatting. Yeah. But 
generally be pretty big shape. And what we did is put in the applications. We had about 2.7 million in applications come through. And then after we got through the end of our process, we ended up a little over two. Uh, we reduced some. Oops, we, you know, and a few dropped off. So um, we can tighten that up a little bit. Make, we'll double check. Tim will double check the numbers. He was a retired accountant. <laughs> you know. And that's the breakdown of, of how we're spending the, um, the money this year. Um, you know, with the required allotment, our whole affordable housing allotment is going to the Affordable Housing Trust this year. Um, so that's good. And then we have, you know, a relatively small amount in recreation uh, and a big year for historic preservation. And, you know, the, the purchase of the of the land on uh, Bradford Street, you know, some open space as well. So, pretty good mix. And that's the all-time, um, you know, allocations of funds, which um, I was surprised how evenly it, it spread out. So. And one of the things that I, I wouldn't bring up for this, because it would be, you know, over the top, is that what you don't see here is this money actually leveraged or induced a lot of other money uh, in two areas uh, is an open space. We got a lot of grants from either state or like the uh, Open Space Foundation as a result of some of our projects. So there's like another three or four million, I think, over the history of that. And that in the area of affordable housing, the project, if you remember the really large project that we did, uh, the one on, oh uh, gosh, what is it? Um, Stevens Crossing. Which one? Stevens Crossing. Stevens Crossing. Yeah, I, I mean, the money that we put in was a small portion of the total. There was like another 10 or 12 million, but the, the project wasn't economically feasible unless we threw our share in. So, you know, again, I think that's more a verbal thing. Like when people talk about that is there's additional stuff you don't say, so. Same with the recreation, there's a, with a lot of private money went into a lot of the recreation money. Yeah, that's no, that's yeah, that, that's a good point. Lots of sweat equity and other, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> even, the, even all the playgrounds and the, yeah. the PTOs and the PTOs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, it, one thing, by the way, I think this is uh, it, is we do not. I think it would be preferable not to have to present this. I mean, really what you want to do in front of town meeting is show one or two slides if you have to at all, or you know, give a short summary of what's there and say I'll take questions. Because the deeper you get into it, I mean, you know, they're not gonna people are not gonna go through it, you know. I tend to agree it's a very large Tom Warren. Yeah. The yeah. other thing too, John, is, is that I I think this thing will pass except for a couple there's three areas. One of the, the couple that are in contention right now, the finance committee, that someone's going to say, Hi, you know, why is the CPC saying one thing and the finance saying the other? So an argument that they don't do anything on the um, Ridgewood side, then an argument has to be made. Because oh, yeah, we're, we're not really changing our vote, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. The second yeah. thing is that uh, people have come back and that one slide with the pie that says all appropriations is a 29 20 percent you know the spread of all the appropriations people are gonna has asked the question in the past how come we don't do more open space purchases but I like what you just said about the fact that you know we do open as a result of our purchasing of open space others grants and the uh, open space funding what was the name of the foundation uh, the Open Space Foundation. Uh, Open Space Foundation the, um, yeah. have come in here with millions of dollars to help supplement. Yeah, I, I think the other thing that this is a little bit of a kind of a, a, a funny way to look at it is that you know open space is available when it's available. So yeah. like in a given year, you may not be able to, to do something, and then you know in another year, a big project may come up, and it's that. Planning ahead that nobody sees. Yep, right. Because yeah. so, we get yeah. some things on our radar, of course. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so those are the things that, to your point, 
well, I hear at the Stevens estate, uh, Stevens Coolidge estate, we're going to do a mural. I mean, should be a person should be prepared to answer the prepared. questions. I mean, right. I, what are you getting in exchange yeah, for? Yeah, I mean, my experience has been, the town meeting has only voted down one single item, and that was the Stevens Crossing the first year it came up, and then it came back the next year and it passed overwhelmingly. But there's never been, you know, a highly contentious foreflight. You know, it's, I think what you, you, what you want is people to ask questions as opposed to proposing amendments if, if yeah. we could do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. So. No, I mean, I, I have heard that, I mean, in the Finance Committee discussion, they did talk about getting to the floor and making a motion. Yeah. On the, thing. so that's. Yeah, so that's what I mean. That's what I, I, yeah. you know, I said to the Richmond people is please, if they're up, still opposed to it, take, take it off. You don't want a floor fight on that. Right. So uh, each one of our applications that we've approved here stands by itself. So someone could just say, you know, I want to vote for one through ten. I'm just throwing numbers off, but not number eleven. You know. Now I think they. Are they from what I understand, no, it, well, what I understand always, a lot of times they do. We've always combined them. It's one yeah, article. Yeah, one thing. One article, so so what, yeah. they'll, what they'll say, the motion would, <clears throat> the motion would be that I would Except like to remove the amount of blank allocated to blank from the appropriation. They would vote yeah, on that motion, before. and then we'd have a revised. Then we'd have to, you know, do the well, math and have a revised number. Yeah, I mean, probably. However, we do. If we do pull, we should talk to Mark about exactly how we do it because. Yeah, I mean, you know, Tim, from all your time in the Vincom, that yeah. it's a fine art to do it properly. Right. Yeah. Right. If you're off a little bit, you can come back to buy a chip. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, there's a motion meeting. I'm. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to Mark. And we should talk to Mark and get it figured out. Um, yeah, so I think if we show the... I think it's always good to give a general overview. So maybe that first slide, the slide of the projects. Any questions? Does that sound like a? Yeah, and also too, I like I like, Keep it like the, the pie charts. The two pie charts says a lot right yeah. there. It's like done. Yeah, we got five minutes, right? So. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can actually say what I was going. To, I told you before I was going to say. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hope and <laughs> <laughs> I got this old pulp poem. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, okay. So yeah, I mean the rest of it, the rest of the presentation just goes through. So you know you'd have if you needed if somebody had a question and they wanted to see the slide, we could pull it up and say here's the. Yep. You know I know we don't need to go through each one, but you know if there's any uh, any questions, and and the we have a fulsome report in the warrant letter, so yep. all the projects are in the warrant. At, in yeah, I'm sure, I mean, as long as there's something for people to see, and yeah. you know, they say, oh, "Okay, if I want to learn about it, I can." Yeah. Again, I think the only things that are contention is the Ridgewood, yeah, mm -hmm. and maybe how the money's been spent historically. That's, that's it. Ron, you have any any thoughts about the presentation? Or anything? Uh, no, I'm just scrolling through it right now, but the shorter the better. Okay. Yeah. Good. So I think, you know, from there, um, we're going to vote. I would like to table the review of um, inactive um, accounts. We'll table that for the next, we may even table it till early next year. Um, the need to you know, the finance team needs to work through a little bit more. So, I mean, that's usually what we do, that ha sort of housekeeping when we yeah. reconvene yeah. after town meeting. So we will skip that. Um, sorry. It brings us to the meeting minutes of March 9th. Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we were we were all there at the last meeting. So. Okay. So um, 
we will reach out about the meeting before town meeting. Uh, and thank you, Gene, for yep. offering that. We can get a spot. Uh, okay, any other motions? Make a motion. But you know the, uh, the, the the acting chair has to bring the food. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that. <laughs> <laughs> cost me a bundle last time was in the yeah. finance committee. <laughs> so John's going to run from the planning board pizza to lobster. Yeah. <laughs> Chinese is not cheap. Uh, <laughs> make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sounds good.